So Sapphire have kindly sent me a new graphics card to review. This is the 260X, a medium spec graphics card that is a great entry point for any gamer really at this current time. Um, gives a lot of price to performance ratio. It's pretty damn good, 100, 100 pounds, and you're gonna get a lot, a lot of power out of this thing as well. You're gonna be able to run in high resolutions, usually uh, medium to low specifications. I mean, if you do max out the details, you know, there's going to be some drag, but we're going to be talking about that a little bit more in my FPS results that I'll be uh, talking about a little later on. But mainly what I want to talk about is the new features that are on this card. So we've got the Mantle API and we've got AMD's True Audio as well. So basically these tools enable the game developers to talk with the hardware a lot easier and develop it so you get better FPS, better sort of immersion, getting to better details with the game, such as with the True Audio you know, having echoes bounce off walls properly and utilize sound to a whole different level that we're not used to in, in the, at the moment in game development. It's it's very static usually. You enter one room, go to the next, and the sound changes rather than sort of distort and echo into each other. And some games in like Thief, when you go in from the rain to outside the rain, you hear a complete difference in rooms. And it's, it's quite interesting really to hear that. And also with the mantle, you're going to, be getting pushing more FPS because it's developed with that game as well. It's an additional bonus to the graphics card. It runs DirectX games perfectly fine. There's nothing to worry about. It's going to have the same performance pushing through in any DirectX game. Uh, it's just that Mantle gives you a little bit of an extra boost if there are games that are developed with it. So this is pretty interesting stuff. I'm looking forward to reviewing it and let's cut to some of the FPS results. Okay, now for some FPS results. So we've got some CSGO action here. And this will not be running Mantle. This is only DirectX 11. There are only selective games for the Mantle software. And we'll be talking about Battlefield in a little bit as that's one of the, the key ones that is currently using Mantle at the moment. But CSGO runs flawlessly on this card on low settings. This is running at 1920 1080p. So high resolution, low details, but you know, getting 265 average FPS, that's more than enough. Down strike go. Now some CSGO in some high settings. Now the only thing that's changed here is I've maxed out the details. The resolution is the same, 1920 by 1080p. And there is a significant drop in frames by 100 in the average frames department. But that means nothing because I'm still currently running at 151. You won't notice much difference, if, if any, to be honest. I'll be honest, you wouldn't really notice anything uh, running at 150 frames average. You're still going to get an incredibly smooth experience running CS. And pretty much... Lots and lots of games run like this on this card, which is really good for a hundred quid card. Pretty impressive. But bear in mind, guys, is that I'm running quite a high spec machine behind it as well. So that's going to influence those FPS results quite a bit. So if you've got a medium spec machine, you can expect a little bit less in terms of your FPS, let's be honest. But uh, still, no doubt, a good card to hold out these results. So next up, we've got the comparison between DirectX 11 and Mantle. So I wanted to see the difference between how they perform both in high and low settings using Battlefield 4. And first off, we have the high settings. This is ultra high, 1080p, uh, and DirectX 11 managing 30 FPS on average. Whereas Mantle had an average of 31 FPS. So pretty much no different. In my opinion, running at 30 FPS on ultra high settings just feels unplayable some people are fine with that playing through single player games but for me it makes my mouse lag it makes me feel a little bit queasy it's just not very smooth and it, it breaks the immersion for me when it's it may look beautiful but if i'm not enjoying myself while playing the game while lagging everywhere i tend to just switch it up and lower the settings a bit which is perfectly fine for me and for a card like the 260 that just seems perfectly acceptable it is a mid-range card i mean if i was looking to play battlefield on everything high i'd be looking at a 280 at least now we have some battlefield in the low settings now this was a surprise result for me so we have direct x 11 here which has got 104 frames whereas mantle as we can see now had 108 so we got a we did get a slight increase this is still running at the same resolution this is at uh, 1080p but with all the details turned down i got four fps extra so mantle seems to cope better in low low stress sort of details so if you lower it down you will get a sort of better fps results coming through mantle and even more so 
when you lower the resolution as we will see in the feed footage now. So more benchmarking, Mantle versus DirectX 11, yet again using FIF and on maximum settings on maximum resolution. DirectX 11 winning by one FPS pretty much, 1.5 FPS. So very even right at the top in terms of those high details and really maxing everything out. But when we scale things down, 720p with low settings, Mantle runs away with it. It really does pick up the pace. It gets a 20 FPS performance increase, which I didn't think would be that would be that big actually I, I was genuinely surprised by that which is pretty damn cool it's a shame not every game uses mantle is the problem because then this would be an amazing pickup this card for every other game that uses mantle but uh, it does come with problems one of them is that you can't use like fraps to record footage so all the re footage i recorded was in direct x11 but i had to go back and do the benchmark results separately uh, using in-game tools for Battlefield 4 and of course FIF using the benchmark tool here. So that was slightly annoying. It made getting these benchmark results a little bit longer than it would usually take. Um, it would be interesting to know if Mantle has some software that can utilize uh, capturing video because I think that's a must for gamers right now because people just want to put their stuff on YouTube all the time. So it would be interesting to see if they develop something like that. Now, enough of Mantle, let's talk about some of the true audio stuff that is going on with Thief. So, of course, if the game developer has designed the game to utilize the true audio of the GPU, essentially, you're going to get better performance coming out because what it does, it actually sends the signal straight to your audio card from your GPU to your audio card, avoiding basically using the CPU too much. So you're going to get slight performance increases and also basically better sound design in game as well so you'll be hearing different echoes and reverb coming off of things entering different rooms but you know while i was playing thief it wasn't a hundred percent perfect i'll be honest it it really depends on the developer really nailing down that sort of sound design into the game as well uh some cases i was switching between no sort of audio uh, encoder at all and i couldn't really tell the difference between the two but you know, if you've got this GPU, you might as well turn true audio on anyway. Even though there might not be too much of a sound difference, you're going to be getting better sort of performance coming out of it purely for the fact that it's avoiding a CPU. You're putting less strain on one system. And so you're going to get a minuscule sort of boost using true audio, which is a cool little feature to have. Another note as well is that the true audio feature doesn't just run through the HDMI cable, it actually runs through your computer to your audio card, and so you can play it out just as normal from any sort of sound card that you've got plugged into your system. So don't worry about it, you don't need extra cables or a mixer or anything like that. So that's just a little side note I thought I added on, because I, I took a while to find that information out, so I was thinking, I can't, maybe I'm not testing FIFA right, maybe I'm not hearing it right because I'm running through, not running through my HDMI cable, but rather my DVI cable. Instead, doesn't matter. Just run it through your sound card and you should have the benefit of true audio. So I feel with the 260 that if you're on a limited budget and you need a bit more performance for buck, I think it's a great option. I mean, if you're a competitive battlefield player as well and you run in low settings and a low resolution, you're going to utilize Mantle very well indeed. Um, but you know that the card itself isn't just about Mantle or the true audio. This card performs very well on all games that I found, providing that you're running in a medium specifications, you're gonna have a great time and you can use high resolutions as well while doing it. It handles very, very well. Um, so overall, it's a great piece of kit. Uh, don't focus too much on the Mantle and true audio. They are great additional bonuses, don't get me wrong providing that the game that you're playing has those additions to them. But, you know, the, the card itself, standalone, without those added features, would do a great job by itself. And just ha adding those mantle pieces and uh, true audio is just a great little bonus as well. And, you know, I thoroughly recommend this card. Go out, get one if uh, you're on a tight budget.